my philodendron in one video! <laughs> hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, my name is Rose, my pronouns are she, her, and today we're gonna talk about philodendron. I'm gonna show you all of my philodendron that I currently have in my collection, which is more than yeah, more than double what I used to have when I last made this video 11 months ago. And by the way, this video is kindly sponsored by Skillshare. I will talk about them a little bit later on in the video. I have definitely gotten in some very, very cute new philodendron in the past year that I'm super excited to show you. Some of the ones that I showed you in that previous video, which by the way, you can find here, are no longer with me, either because they had thrips and I threw them out, like you saw in that video, or because like Mushu, my ring of fire, I propagated him and sold the cuttings. And that whole process of like eight months of propagating, I actually filmed, that video is out now. I think it's best to take you around the house to show you these plants because I can't bring all of them here. Some of them are in the tent, some of them are planted in my big terrarium. So let's get started. Let's start upstairs because some of the saddest plants are in the tent behind me. For example, whatever is left of my Melanochrysum propagations. I sold several of these. So we have a few left or like the bases left and they have definitely been ignored a lot. It also looks like either this is dried out a lot or it might have thrips again because you never know. With some of them, I don't see the actual bugs, but I do see the damage. It might be left over from when I had a pest in here several months ago, but still this looks pretty sad. And then here we have my beautiful gigas. I'm gonna put it up here so you can see it a little bit better. Look at that shine. This is a very, very cool plant that I think is very underestimated. This is a little bit of a sad one. The better one you'll see in the terrarium later on because I broke off this leaf as it was coming out. Whoops. I recently saw a mature one of these in one of the growers and it was so beautiful. Actually, when these are mature, they get more of the ears on the leaf and then the leaf also gets a little bit more wide at the top and then smaller at the bottom. So a little bit more heart shaped. It was absolutely stunning. And there's shimmers in the midline there. Can you see? This is a very cool plant. I don't know why people don't like it as much as Melanochrysum. More Melanos. This is the other original one that I had. This is the small one that kept growing. The big one I cut and sold some cuttings off. It's still beautiful and shiny, but it's getting either too much light or not enough fertilizer. It's just not the happiest one right now. I, it needs some attention, but I've been ignoring the tent overall a little bit. As you can see, it's quite empty because I potted most of the plants into the big terrarium now, so I don't come up here as much. Down here we also have a micans that looks very sad. It definitely needs water. It's very, very dried out. Hold on. We're gonna do that right away. And I noticed that in my previous video, I actually didn't mention micans when it was one of my first, like, hard to find plants back then. And the first velvet plant that I ever had, I was in love with it. I'll have a better one to show you downstairs that stairs that's more pretty and all these bugs by the way they're good bugs that are in the little baggies i work with entocare to treat any pests and in the tent especially because the humidity is high they like to climb all over the plants vicky propagations this also looks a little bit sad from the older leaves because of thrips several months ago but the new leaves you can see look quite good. I hope it's gonna recover a little bit. The last one that is actually very cool, all sorts of Hoyas back here as well. If you want to see a Hoya collection video or Anthurium collection video or something, let me know in the comments. So I got this planted as just a stick, a wet stick propagation, and it grew quite quickly for me. But this last leaf definitely has some damage that looks like pests. Although these leaves are crawling with, can you see here? Yes, good bugs. So I am treating it and I don't see any actual thrips or anything. I see the good bugs walking around, but it doesn't look super promising, that part. Hopefully it's gonna do better. But I have grown, well, it has grown four leaves for me and there's a new one on the way. This moss pole is a little bit dry, so I need to water that a little bit. And also roots are coming out the bottom, so it might need a repot. It's actually super, super dry. Can you see the pot? Hmm. Let's water it real quick. All right, let's hope this recovers. 
Maybe it's also getting a little bit too much light over here because it's quite bright right there. But we'll see. I do absolutely love the velvet of this. It's hard to show you, but it's beautiful. And that's all the philodendron in the tent. So let's get downstairs. I got this lovely philodendron scandens, the heart shaped philodendron from the book signing of Mama Botanica. She handed out gifts for everyone, goodie bags with a plant and a pot, which is adorable. And I chose this one. Very, very cute and basic. My original one was huge, but it didn't do well. So that now lives out there. I'll show you in a minute, but this new one is doing great. In these shelves, they're actually mostly my Hoya shelves, but we also have some philodendrons in here. Like this cutie baby, this is a philodendron scandens neon, which I love, the heart-shaped neon leaves. It was a little bit slow, but it's starting to grow better now for me. Adorable. And a similar one is this one. I'm just gonna move it to the less annoying light. This is philodendron lemon lime, as we call it here at least in the Netherlands. This is the longer shaped leaves. I got this as a cutting from one of my patrons, Natalie, but it was struggling so, so much. It was, oh, it was so slow. It was only dying back until finally it started to root and then it grew these adorable leaves and another one on the way. But it took a really, really long time. And now it lives here with all my beautiful Hoyas, which I can make a video about as well, but it just gets a lot of light and it seems to be quite happy. Down here is one more philodendron. This is my pastazanum, which I also got from a, actually from a follower that had an extra cutting that she wanted to send me, super lovely. It grew this leaf, which was very damaged as you can see, and it's yellowing, but it grew this one as well, which is pretty. And then down here, there's a new leaf on the way, as you can hopefully see. There is a thrip on there though. Do you see that? That's a zebra thrip. Mama, mature one. Ah, one, two, three, bye. So that's not good. We need some more Prada trips and baggies. I'm gonna call Entocare. Maybe that's why the leaf is yellowing. Why in all these philodendron videos, I always find thrips. This is not fun. I think it actually came from this plant, which was living outside in the summer. It was in my greenhouse, which of course is lovely to have plants outside in the greenhouse but you never know what blows in there. And I actually found another mature thrip on this. So I'm gonna quickly kill that. So I think that is a big risk if you do want to have your plants outside in summer, you never know what you bring in. And even though I isolated this for several weeks in a plastic baggie, I think it may have been the source of some more bad bugs. So we're gonna move both of these into my thrips isolation box, which I have up on the attic up there. Luckily the other plants around it are basically all Hoyas and even though Hoyas are not so prone to thrips I have had thrips on them so always be careful with that but I also have good bugs everywhere here so I think it should be okay you just have to keep an eye out on the philodendrons oh actually there is a can you see this <sighs> almost cannot this is a melanochrysum propagation that had thrips damage, so I kept it isolated in here, although there's a hole. Here's actually one more philodendron. This is a white knight that is growing. I'm growing this out for a friend, and I kept it in this box first for high humidity, but now I'm a little bit worried because there will be a lot of new thrips in there, so I might take this out and put this in a separate baggie because I don't think it has thrips, but just to be sure, and then we can put all the really infested ones together. All right. Pasta and Syngonium are in here. White Knight is in a plastic baggie. Close and back up on the attic so we don't think about it. They have enough humidity to not need any water anytime soon. So I really highly recommend this if you have big boxes that you can fit your plants in. It definitely puts your mind off of the stupid pests a little bit more. Okay, now that that's settled, let's look in the terrarium. Sorry about any noise that you might hear. I am doing laundry, so the washing machine is on, but hopefully my new mics will help improve the sound. And if you left a comment recently about the noise only coming into one of your ears on your headphones, I'm so sorry. Thank you so much for letting me know. I looked into the settings and hopefully now it comes into both ears. If not, always feel free to comment and let me know if something doesn't feel right or look right. I'm doing my best, but I'm just a self-taught YouTuber, so I'm no expert in all of this stuff. I'm just doing my best.
There's only three philodendrons in this terrarium because they usually grow quite quickly and I want to keep space for all the anthuriums and orchids and all that fun stuff. So in the back we have a few micans, two or three cuttings that are growing, hopefully are going to grow up the wall. Then we have a philodendron brontianum here, which looks beautiful when it shingles. I'll show you in my other terrarium. And down here next to the beautiful ink cap that is about to open actually. It just came up this morning and now it's starting to slowly open and then it will look very interesting. But this is my most beautiful philodendron gigas. I'm hoping to climb it up this stem so that it gets nice and big quite quickly. It has three, four leaves right now and there's another one on the way there. Do you see the little point? I actually love this. I told you already upstairs, but I love this one. Isn't that fascinating? The little ink cap. I don't know where it came from, but it's okay. I heard it's not bad, so we're leaving it in. In the greenhouse, which is currently set up for winter, which means we've got a bubble plastic everywhere along the ceiling, along the front windows. And we have a little heater in here to keep it at least 10 degrees. We just saw our electricity bill for November and we're definitely not going to do this anymore because it was so expensive. This is definitely not recommended. As soon as the sun comes out, it's nice and warm. In here we have two philodendrons. This one, it looks a little bit weird because I've been watering my plants in a bucket of water that had perlite in them, the plants up there. So the perlite has been falling down. This is not mealybugs, it's perlite bits. But this is my Prince of Orange that I got from one of my best friends. Look at how long it's grown. The stem is super long. I've given it a pull, but it's almost at the end of the pull. And with whatever I've tried, it's never really gotten that orange color. Although this one does look a little bit orange now, but it's an older leaf. The newer leaves always come out super red. So it's making me question whether it is actually a Prince of Orange or something else. But when I got it, it did come out really nice and orange. So very interesting. I love all the different colors of the leaves. This one is the one that had like stretch marks when it came out because it was growing too fast, too much light. So this actually stayed. That's not normal. Normally that goes away, but it stayed on mine. So I've had it down there for summer where it gets less light and that it really liked that. But for winter, I don't want the plants to sit on the floor too much because it gets too cold. Excuse the mess, by the way, it's a big mess over here. <laughs> All sorts of stuff that we need for different projects. But yeah, this is sitting on the table for now. Oh, I actually just noticed that our Christmas cactus is about to flower. Look, the little pink flowers. That's very cute because these were some cuttings of a plant that died. So I'm happy about that. It's coming back. Anyway, <laughs> the other philodendron that we have. <laughs> I'm trying to stand on some branches that we're gonna build cat trees out of, but it's a bit wobbly. <laughs> okay, this is the Burl Marks variegata that I got from a friend. And it was growing green for such a long time, like all the leaves are green, all the leaves are green. But this one did get beautiful variegation just as I was about to give it away. And this one as well, but the new leaves, I guess they are not here yet. It took a while. It took a little bit of a hit this summer. This leaf also looks like it has thrips damage because it was sitting right next to the syngonium that was living here. So probably it had thrips as well, or maybe it still does. My plant is shaking a little bit, so I can't show you properly. Oh yeah, I see your thrips right there. Do you see it? I was hoping it was gonna get too cold in here for it, but I guess not. I don't know what temperature they can take. Do you see it right there? It's gone now. Goodbye, friend. I actually do see some damage up here on this plant, which might indicate cold damage. Do you see all the... This is edema or oedema. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it means just damage from water. But it has been almost freezing here, so damage from water plus cold. That is a little bit scary. I did water this a few days ago, so maybe it's just that and it's fine. It should stay up to 10 degrees in here, so you never know. It might be okay. 
I don't know if we can still call this a philodendron, but last one in here. This used to be my big plant. I took cuttings because it had root rot or something. I think I didn't water it for such a long time that everything dried out. And I kind of ignored the cuttings, also because I now have a new plant. So it's been sitting here in water. It's a little bit sad and disgusting. I know this does not look like water, but it was water before. Ugh. That was all the philodendrons in the greenhouse. So let's go back inside through the cold to the warmth. It's raining a lot in Holland. We have a few philodendrons in my small terrarium, which is looking very, um, what do you call it? Like calcium deposits on the windows, but okay. This is Brantianum. Like I said, it's beautiful shingling up the moss wall. I hope it will do that in the terrarium as well. Then Pink Princess Mama, this is the only one that I have left, is I cut it back because it wasn't growing pink. Hopefully these new growths have some pink, although it doesn't look like it. And down there we have some pups that also had some pink. There was a half moon baby leaf somewhere. See, down there, super adorable. Also lots of beautiful Hoyas, I know. These two I recently got from my friend Katja, who is also on YouTube as Adansonia. This is a Soderoy, which is absolutely beautiful, super silver on this leaf that the cutting came with. And then the new growth is here. It only just opened this new leaf very recently for me. It's very, very small, very cute. And there is a new one next to it. Super cute. Have you seen this one before? Do you like this one? I didn't know I wanted it, but she gave it to me as a gift and I was like, whoa, that's amazing. She also sent me this one. This is Philodendron Glorious, a beautiful cutting that I got from her. And it grew very quickly. It made this stem and then this small, small baby leaf with some water on it. Sorry about that. And then this new leaf, which is super pink. Maybe we can show you with the extra light that I have here. Trying to be extra professional. This is already a lot bigger than the previous one. So I hope that the stick as well will help it with some support and that it will grow nice and big quickly. Oh, and then I have some melano sticks in here as well that don't have any leaves, but hopefully they will grow in the nice, humid, warm environment. Before we continue, let's have a quick moment to talk about our sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning platform with so many different topics and classes and teachers. It is amazing. I love being on there. Whether you want to learn about more traditional topics like drawing or sewing, or you want to learn how to edit or how to improve your online content or marketing or yoga, they have so many different things to look for. It is a paid platform, so there are no ads and they're always adding new classes. For example, the one that I'm currently taking, which is quite new and I love it, it's called Video Editing with Final Cut Pro from beginner to YouTuber. And what I like about it is that it gives you some clear, super practical tips in very short, accessible videos. So it's very concise and clear, but it gives you great results. And hopefully I can make my videos a little bit fancier and more fun to watch because of this class. The first thousand people who use the link in the description will get a one month free trial rather than two weeks. So go check that out if you're interested and let's get back to the video. In this new corner, we have two philodendrons, two of my oldest ones. This is Vicky, the varicosum. The leaves are looking a little bit sad. This was the top cutting. This is such a beautiful plant. I'm trying to light it so that you can see all the beautiful features. The backs of the leaves are super red on mine and the hairy petioles. Probably everyone has seen a varicosum before already, but I still think it's beautiful. And then down here we have Caspar, which is looking amazing right now, I think, because I planted three plants together in this pot. The leaves were very minty. It was in quite a dark spot for summer. And then when it became winter, I kind of wanted some more white. So I moved it here where I have this very bright, long light set up to help this plant, because it definitely needs more light than it's getting in this corner. And since it was also shining on the floor, I decided to move Casper here to get a little bit more white leaves, which as you can see, worked out great. Beautiful new leaves opening are, especially this one as well, is quite light. 
and this one is now slowly turning green which we're also very happy about if you're new to my channel check out this video to see what happened to my caspar when i gave him too much light it was very very sad but now it looks like such a cool full pot i absolutely love it with all the different colors yay one beautiful plant that lives up here i'm gonna take it down to show you better because these lights are very orangey and they don't do this plant justice this is my beautiful philodendron plaumani which is stunning with the dark veins and then the silver markings this one is a little bit yellow but that's okay this leaf also i think these were not getting enough light for again in summer that spot where it was is fine but in winter it's not so the additional light helps a little bit but I don't think this plant is super happy. Maybe we will also find thrips on it, you never know. It's a very surprising video so far. But it actually looks like there is a new leaf on the way, so I think the additional light has helped. This plant has not grown for a long time. I do have Swirsky mites on there, which work against thrips. And Spicol as well, which works against spider mites. The backs of these plants is also very cool. It's a little bit harder to see in this light. It's very gloomy today again but there are ruffles on the backs overall this is definitely one of my favorites and i hope it will look a little bit better get a few more leaves but we might have to wait until spring for it to progress more maybe i should put it in the windowsill to give it a little bit more light but everything needs a little bit more light so the windowsill is very full right now four more plants to go this is my most beautiful micans i'm trying to rotate the light so you can see all the beautiful shimmers this is actually growing up the moss pole that i made for my big fairy my variegated monstera which is by the way reaching the top of it but it makes the back of the whole thing look a little bit more pretty rather than just roots and moss like i said this is one of the first i think maybe the first um, like rare plant that i bought at the kekyeki opening two years ago so still love this one a lot it has struggled you can see some thrips damage here from previously hopefully never know but managing pests is part of having house plants unfortunately the next one is my big melano with some of the very very long leaves i got this from bloodhout plants my friend and her shop and i absolutely love it it does look like it needs some fertilizer which i will do after filming and i gave it a steak but it's still a little bit wobbly <laughs> but look at this this leaf came out in my care and then it's about to open another one i spray this every day to help it open because i do have this in my living room and i don't want them to get stuck it did get stuck a little bit so you can see how i helped the stem back there a little bit don't try this at home <laughs> beautiful shimmery leaves it's hard to show you because i have to hold camera and the light there we go this is better see how beautifully shimmery that is especially this newest leaf even though it had it was coming out as it shipped to me so it is a little bit damaged but very very beautiful this is goud which means gold which i love the name of that and this last pot actually has three plants in it, two gloriosums and one bonus plant that I planted in there yesterday or something. This is apple, my big gloriosum. It has some markings on the leaves. I don't know what they are exactly, but it seems like they have this from coming out, from opening, and they're not so bad. It currently has uh, one, two, three, four leaves yes because i cut this oldest one off because it was pointing in a very awkward direction it didn't fit with the pot the other one on this side was my baby that i got as a very small cutting from my friend jess it used to grow in the tent so it got a little bit too much light and i wanted it to be more in view because it is beautiful this latest leaf is a little bit smaller because it was struggling a little bit but now it is sitting in the prime spot in my windowsill together with his big brother apple so i think it will be okay and then down here <laughs> let me get under apple this is my atapapuensi that i also got from jess and i got it as a very small cutting the leaves were basically that size and the latest one is that size isn't it cool and there's a new one about to open 
Something that is most beautiful about these plants is actually the back. So if you look at the back of this, it is super, super red. Isn't that amazing? You don't expect it. Actually, mine is quite light green at the moment because it was getting a lot of light in the small terrarium. That's why I potted it in here. You can see with the older leaves that they're a little bit darker, like they are kind of supposed to be. I do bleach some of my plants sometimes, not on purpose, but this is gonna probably look a lot better in the windowsill. And that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, check out the Skillshare link if you haven't already, and I will see you again very soon. I selected some videos that I think you might enjoy as well if you wanna watch more planty content. Bye friends.